Welcome back. Here we are in the Pentagon. We had a lovely reunion. I would say reunion. It's not really a reunion. It's like a a meeting between three main groups across Sky, Crossbelt, and Gold Steel. It was lovely. And we do have to do the rounds now and speak to people all around the place. And I'm just wondering who's who and who's where. But I want to start with the random people first, the ones that are just simple yellow dots on the map. I'm still curious about the meeting, but I guess I'll just have to wait for the result. Fair enough, at least we know about that now. Right, so there's a guy down here. Mr. Butler. It is! Welcome, welcome. I'm the butler in the service of the Logwin family. Please don't hesitate to let me know if you need anything. What is that? Hmm. I feel like I know it. Something about its design looks familiar. It's a great pleasure to have guests from the highly esteemed Paws Military Academy. Hope you'll find your stay with us relaxing and your room satisfactory. Like, who's in here? Alright. I want to see if I can find... Yeah. Like, the, these are the groups I'm more interested in. There, 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 there. But there's one I'm very interested in. Very chip. But we've still got one more dot to investigate first. Who's, go who's going on in here? Mm, not as interested. Truthfully, on her own there. I think we'll start with the, the, the rooms at the back. Or the front. I'm not sure which way around the ship is. We've been making our own preparations in secret. Lady Mildeen's Operation Millet Barrage is the only thing capable of stopping Operation Jormungard. Chancellor Osborne's government must be stopped. Justice is on our side. What? It's a Calvert spy right there. And no one's even paying attention to that. Let's start over here with you lot. I don't know if you're connected, Agate. It's just the way you're sort of like off to the side, but... Kurt and Ash, good to see you again. Happy to have your instructor back. Yes, very much so. It was only possible thanks to everyone's help. Agurt was pretty impressive with that sword of his. I really see where he got the name Heavy Blade. Those two weren't bad either. I might have taken a couple of swings, but I was just uh, one of my many uh, taking part in Operation Busterine out. Same goes for me and Kia. Maybe our timing was lucky, but credit goes to everyone equally. Joshua, Mash, don't the two of you have something important to talk about? Triple dot. Ren. She's right, don't put it off. Everything's going to shit right now. There's no guarantee you'll be able to see each other again. Yes, you should sort things out now. There's no denying that Raquel has become a home to you, Mash. But I'm sure there's value in learning about the place that led you there. Hmm. Triple dot. What music is going to play? Thank you. Hamel was just a small village. It had m no more than a few dozen inhabitants. As a result, there were very few children living there. Louvet was the oldest at 16. My sister, Green, was 15 and I was 6. But there was another boy too. He was three years old. He was too young to play with us much. But ever since he was a baby, we looked after him. I was looking forward to playing with him when he was a little older. He's also like a little brother to me. But then those peaceful days abruptly ended. A group of Jaeger dropouts posing as the Royal Army opened fire on the villagers. I watched on as Jan and Amelia were shot. There was blood everywhere. And their son fell to the ground, blood all over his clothes. We fled, we ran and ran too afraid to look back. Survival was the only thing on our minds. The boy didn't die though. He had merely fainted in shock. I had no idea. Eventually we made it out of the village. Nouvet stayed behind to distract our pursuers. He told me and Karine to keep running. We got ambushed by another group of Jaeger dropouts. 
Na ha malukka. Joshua. That's truly heart wrenching. Heard it before, but it gets me every time. That's what happened 14 years ago. At least, that's how I remember it. That boy we left behind might have a different perspective on the events that day. He may have hated us for escaping without him, and I can't blame him. The bullet you fired at Emperor Eugen should have been for me. Joshua. It's alright, Ren. It's a shock when I heard about what happened in Heimdall. I realized the burden that boy from Hamel had to live with. But even though I felt immense guilt that we hadn't checked to see if he was alive, that we hadn't taken him with us, there was another feeling too. Overwhelming joy. I can't say how happy it made me when I found out he had survived. Joshua. Thanks for being patient and listening to this long story of mine. I mean, it's a story we keep hearing. And it's just... That's the start of it all, really, isn't it? Mostly. <laughs> Don't know why you're bothering telling me. It's got nothing to do with me, but... It wasn't entirely boring. I managed to stay awake till the end. Ash. Hmm. Ugh. Glad to hear it. Thanks, Ash. The Hamel tragedy took place about the same time I was first taken to Ymir. Glad Ash was able to hear Joshua's story. Indeed. That's a, ooh, more. Uh, that, that's that's what I wanted. Like, not for it to be ignored and we wait till later or it's maybe part of a bonding event or something like that. It's like, no, no. Get it out now while Joshua's here. It's like, yeah. Sup, dudes? Oh, I didn't notice you were there, Instructor. Hey, Rain. Dude, eavesdrop much? <laughs> Sorry about that. But the same event Joshua was talking about pretty much changed the course of my life, too. So it's at least a little relevant to me. Why so defensive, Ash? I thought you said Joshua's story had nothing to do with you. <laughs> She's got you there. Whatever. Screw all that old drama. We've got plenty of new drama we could talk about instead. For example, what's going on with you and Russell, huh? The hell are you talking about? Huh? <laughs> Just teeter in the distance. Oh, why don't you share with the rest of the class? But Ren, it's not like that. Damn, you can't even see what's right in front of your face, old man. We all know what's going on. It's obvious to anyone with half a brain. Who are you calling old, you little brat? I'm only 28. Why are we even talking about this? That's a very... Ash way to change the topic. Hm. You used to be such a crybaby. I'm glad that idiot has kept him safe. No. Uh, not just her. Thanks to a number of kind-hearted people. Yeah, thanks for sharing that story with us, Joshua. Of course. Thank you as well, Reen. For all you've done for him. Well, there we go. Cut the crap, man. Why the hell would you even say something like that? What? I'm just curious. Seriously, though, if you don't make a move, some other guy will sweep Teeter off her feet before you know it. Ash, walk away, slowly. Cut the crap. Fair enough. Finally, getting to tell Ash about all this has really taken a load off my shoulders. Thanks for giving me the chance, Ron. No problem. Do you two are a lot alike, actually. I've had a little clumsy when it comes to your feelings. <laughs> Can't deny that. The situation with Joshua and that blonde porcupine has calmed down. Next is Agate and Tita's relationship. Let's see what we can find. Sheesh, you're pretty merciless, you know? I'm gonna, like, just check so much with people here. Like, I've checked with Agate several times. I'm gonna check with Ash. Like, just to be sure. I don't want to miss the dialogue, you know. Reen, it may not be my place to ask, but please look after Ash. I'll do the same in my own way. Of course, Joshua. He's in good hands. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of repeated stuff of me skipping through, but it's like, I think both me and you out there would appreciate me doing that. It's been more lively than usual around here, but I'm glad to see Ash enjoying himself again. Yeah, it seems like I guess getting 
The short end of the stick, though. He can take it. He can take it. Right, so what's gonna happen with you guys? I never dreamed I'd be in the presence of the President of Calvert and the Grand Prince of Remetheria. Grand Prince Claudia and Lieutenant General Cassius are here too. Man, this place is crammed top to bottom with bigwigs. Me, on the other hand, I'm just the schmuck with an airship. What am I doing here, mingling with them? What's the problem? You're great at mingling. And besides, you've been helping out Lloyd and Reen a bunch. No reason for you to not be here. And by the way, thanks for helping me and Agate cross the border into the Empire. Things would have been way harder without you. Tita, I told you that was no big deal. You saved my bacon too in Heimdall. And then I ate it. It was lovely. Seems like Kapoor Delivery Service is always there to help when we're in a pinch. Your services are a lifeline for the guild too. Everyone's very thankful to have you guys around. You don't work for Jaegers and you stay away from shady business. That counts in favor, in your favor too. L look, it's a business and we do what we have to, to in order to turn a profit. Oh, she's blushing. Oh, you can't stop her. You really like teasing her, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, it's friendly teasing. Leaves, as well as the branch campus, used to be within the Kapua Barony. Members of Kapua Delivery Service used to be the Sky Bandits. But they seem like decent people. Hey, Rain. You're quite the social butterfly today. Just making sure I get to talk to everyone. Cassius is next on my list. No, he's not. Makes sense since you both studied with uh, Mr. Kafai, after all. If I'm being honest, I'm not really sure why he and Chloe agreed to come all the way here. It's like, I if I was going to say what I'd want in terms of, like, thinking... Eight leaves who I'd want here. It's like, I'd like Arios to be here and an obvious yellowed... Ye yellow... Yellow... Bowed... How would you say that? Yellow bow. It's not bowed. Is it yellow bowed hair? That doesn't quite make... It doesn't sound right in my head. How would you phrase that? I don't know. If I'm being honest, I'm not really sure why he and Chloe agreed to come all the way here. I don't know what to think about this Duchess Cayenne. This whole meeting is giving me some bad vibes. You say he's not a bad person, I promise. I can you imagine? She must have been planning this for a while. She tries not to show it, but the situation in the Empire was probably bothering her a lot. You noticed too, didn't you, Instructor? Yeah, I did. But from what I've heard, Yuna saw right through her when they met back up. Sure, you may also be a genius who can come up with plans to change the fate of the world, but that's beside the point. There's no way an ordinary girl like you would be okay with a plan that would cost millions of people their lives, is there? <laughs> we caught a glimpse of her true self back then. Ba bam bam bam. She's only 16, younger than me. Heard this and that about the Cayenne family. The Duke before last was widely believed to be a just and wise noble. When he died in an accident, his younger brother inherited the title. But all he cared about was his personal interests. Yes. Pepper. Musée's foolish uncle even stirred up the Civil War. And their family was about to be stripped of their title and privilege. Yeah, here we are, with Musée as the mastermind behind a plan to save the world. He's got more guts than anyone on this ship. I think I can empathize with her more after hearing that. Yeah, me too. Judging from what I've heard, no surprise she understands. There's no telling how these talks will go until they're over and done with. But regardless of what major events are set in motion, we must not forget about the individuals that will be swept up. The Musée is one of these individuals, so do me a favor and stay by her side. Doubt you need me to tell you that, though. Mm -hmm. You really are amazing. Huh? <laughs> You really just say what you think. Without beating around the bush, huh? I see now why Tita compares you to the sun. 
you know, bright and all. You're bright. Oh, and you dispel any shadows of doubt in others. Thanks for the advice. That's my intention all along, but I need the, the kick to get around to it. <laughs> Glad to hell. Good luck. Thanks. Nope, another scene. Oh, Estelle, there's something I've been dying to know. You and Joshua are together, right? But how far exactly have you guys gone? Gotcha, huh? That's so out of the blue. Don't try to wiggle out of it now. I'm burning with curiosity too. <laughs> you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have tried to dodge the question uh, unless... Uh... Whoa. Why are you all bugging me about it? Uh... I'll tell you when Reen's right there. What if he hears? Looks like they're talking about something personal. I don't want to be a third wheel. I better go. More like a fifth wheel, but alright. Yeah. Isn't it cute how Estelle gets all flustered? Yeah, it makes me want to jump right in and ask her for more details. Instructor Sarah, V, please show us some mercy. Do 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 do. Just being short. You know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep saying just being short, just to remind you of why I'm doing it. I'll try to do what I can, badum. Did you just badum out that? <laughs> You're okay, Tita. You're blushing really hard. I got this. Badum. What's up, still? Still no progress? Need some cheering up. I wouldn't say that, it's just... Hey! Knock it off with the leading questions. Probably shouldn't be listening into this. I wonder if Josette's gonna mention anything about, like... Joshua at all though. Maybe it's just she's moved on. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder if that plot point's even gonna be mentioned at all. I don't know. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. Who who was it? Who was on this side? Uh, yes, so it's like Lucy is the interesting one there probably, but we gotta go on to this side. We gotta go on to this side. Right. Cross, cross Bell and Altina. And you've bulked up since I last saw you, Lloyd. You haven't grown taller as much as got wider in the shoulders. I found the runs better than hitting the gym. I had to get my outfits retailed. I met this guy called Patrick. He introduced me to someone. Oh, I didn't notice. We see him every day, so the difference isn't as obvious. But he looks more like he... Like his brother now, doesn't he? Does he? I, I wouldn't say that. I've only seen him in pictures, but yeah, I'd say so too. No, I've not seen it. No, if only I had his height too. That's probably what it's missing. Is it Guy Bannings you are referring to? He was once a high-ranking officer at the Crossbell Police Department, but died in the line of duty five years ago. Yeah, we used to live nearby. If I only know him from visions of the past I've seen here and there. He was super torn, and he seemed like a really reliable guy. That guy. Good guy. Yeah. I feel like such a kid compared to him. But there's no use in wishing I was more like my brother. I've got to play the cards I've been dealt with. Interesting thing about the name Guy, by the way. Like, the reason that the name Guy became that sort of, like, synonymous with, like, person, meaning, like, hey, that guy, is all to actually to do with Bonfire Night. Yeah, because you had Guy Fawkes, which is just, it was just a name back then. Just a name, just Guy. Didn't mean anything like dude, person, man, or anything like that. Just, that was his name. Just Guy Fawkes, just Guy, like John. Just, just meant that. Just, just Guy. But because of everything that happened there, we know, with the gunpowder plot, remember, remember the 5th of November, all that type of stuff. Because then it became a sort of... I don't want to say celebration of his death, but it's probably uh, appropriate. It's basically what happens in the UK is we burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes every year. And that's that's been a tradition for centuries now. <laughs> we still do it. But because it's that idea of like, we burn an effigy, it's like we make a guy. And that started to become synonymous with we make a person, we, we make a representative. It's like, hey, a penny for the guy. You give some money to children so they can build an effigy of 
Guy Fawkes. So it's a penny for the guy, a penny for the dude. And that's how it came, came about as a synonym for person, dude. That's where that came from. So that's, it's like the fact this guy, Guy Bannings, is called Guy Bannings. Makes sense because it's just a name, but I just thought you'd like that history a bit. Anyway, but there's no use wishing I was more like my brother. I've got to play the cards I've been dealt with. <laughs> it's me you've got, not him. I've got no citations on that, by the way. I got told that. So if it's wrong, please let me know. <laughs> and I'm determined as can be to end this and work towards independence for Crossbell. Me too. Spoken like a true leader. It's no wonder you were able to shake myself and instruct Arena off during our encounter two years ago. Well, he's been through a lot. In fact, I might have had it easier than him. I don't know, May. I mean... It's news to me that he had a brother, though. His brother sounds like an amazing person, too. It's that, it's that sort of thing, like... It's... I'd say at the moment how I feel with the four... Protagonists. It's very much... Estelle, Estelle is just great. Her story is just great. She's a very believable, energetic person. She's just lovable. She's bright. Like the sun. Yeah. Tita sums it up quite well. Lloyd is just very dependable. And he made a really, really fantastic choice. And again, for me, that choice that he made... That's like, like very, very personal self-sacrifice. He could have had everything he wanted and chose not to. Such a fantastic choice. That's why he's number one for me. Reen, his, his is mainly like... It can be summed up with the word sacrifice. Like he's given up so much. It's not that he's dependable. That it's it's just he throws away his own happiness essentially to try and make everyone else happy, to the point where it's like he completely just fell into despair as a result. That's essentially what happened in his story. And Kevin's just Kevin. I mean, what else do I need to say on Kevin? It's Kevin. That's it. Yeah. It's just me the other brother, though. His brother sounds like an amazing person, too. I could have, I could have done it after that. Oh. Hi, dudes. Instructor Ring. Aren't you busy playing nice with everyone? Well, I've got to make the most of this opportunity. Lloyd, there's a lot for us to catch up on. <laughs> I'd love to get a drink or two with you if I had the time, but... Sweet, I'm coming, too. How about we go to a place I know when this thing lands? It's got some pretty nice... Randy! Alright, alright. <laughs> That's just like Randy. Actually, that reminds me. There was this bar. Uh, Risha Mal. Alright. Like, what do you mean that reminds you, Risha Mal? Risha Mal's busy elsewhere right now. Yeah, there's a bunch of different factions at play here, both within and outside Arabonia. The other members of the SSS and our close allies are all busy dealing with them. Like Noel, Chief Sergei, Dudley, and Arios. That's right, Fran and Wazzy help us out sometimes too. I, wa I want to see Fran. Out of everyone, genuinely, Fran. Sonia and Mirai, Mi Mi I forgot how to say it, have been keeping their heads down though. They can't do too much, considering their position. They're members of the same crossbow guardian force that was absorbed by the Imperial Army, aren't they? I mean, the thing is, it's like, it doesn't matter how I say it, it depends how it comes up later, because I'm thinking to myself at the moment, constantly, for, like the previous part and this part, I'm very much like, wasn't it Al Slazer? That's what I was in my head, like, wait a minute. They're both very capable officers. Yeah, they have the same objective we do, but different obligations. Not unrelated to the contents of today's meeting. Okay, I'm starting to get a clearer picture. Can't help but get an idea of the master plan, looking at the people. Museum General Le Guin invited here. Alright, I'm impressed. You ever think about becoming a detective? I doubt I could match up to the pros. Okay, can someone tell me what's going on? Same here. The only thing I know for sure is that these two gotta stop showing off already. I believe you are just projecting, Instructor Randy. <laughs> you could do the same if you tried, Randy. 
Hey, I'm not sure I like what you're saying, kiddo. We can chat with Lloyd's group for a while. How long's what? Oh, hello. You know, I don't think I'll ever run out of things to chat with you about. But if I could bring up just one more thing, I was from you know you play a bit of Vantage Masters. I play against Q from time. Oh, please tell me you can play against Q. I play. Have we already played against Q? I can't remember now. I play against Q from time to time. So if you're ever raring for a match. Let me know. I'm sure we did, didn't we? I can't remember who we played against now. Oh yeah, uh, you're on. Then we'll have to make sure things don't get too out of hand. You're telling me. Alright, let's give it a go. I'd love to. We'll go with that, because it worked well, so. Ever evolving, though. Here's to a good, clean match. What, what was the beast? I was trying to read it, I didn't get time. Uh, oh, we've got uptide. We don't really want these at this point. Better. Better, but... My turn, huh? Hmm. That's nice, that's nice. Draw a card and counterattack steal plus two damage. Okay. Hmm. Let's say just get that for ourselves at that point. Bum ba bum bum ba dum ba dum bum ba Ooh, six and an eight there. Problem is, like, water ones are gonna be a bit dodgy. So I'm thinking we get you out as quickly as possible. So, the best way to do that is to go there. We can come here. Go to that. Get that gone. I'm hoping you don't do any attacks. Oh, I was going to say, but if you do, please do it on the night. Because I'd like to move the ammo Tamis back. Because it's like, sure. Well and good. Being at the front, but you know it's it's a ranged one, you know. You know. Okay, I'll put you there as well. We'll hold off on the uptides. We'll continue. What did that do? Lower its mana. Quiet, I assume. Okay. So we get an uptide out. That'd be very good for us. Like, it's just sort of like, maybe I should get, like, before using the next one, get this one out. It's like I'd like to get it out when I can use that straight away as well, as I haven't got seven mana at this point. It's like, hmm. Whereas that, I have enough to take you out because of the tribute square. And this one, I can do that. Range, so it's good. We'll do that now, actually, like just to top it up. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. I feel like we're in a very strong position right now. Yeah, it just depended on what came there at that point. So it's like, okay, uptide now. Skill. 
So it's making us very, very strong. Very strong. So I'm thinking. Sure, we get that one dead. Bosh. This is good. This is good. Get a Blix out. Hmm. I'm gonna get you out. And then obviously, I should unleash, because I feel like we should have enough here. So that'll take off three, but. So that'll get you in one fell swoop. God, so much going on here. I'm gonna seal you. I don't need the heal really anywhere, do I? The next turn, I think we've got him. My turn, huh? Like some kind of buff card. I can use the magic crystal to my benefit as well due, due to that. That's a shame, but we'll get you out. Right, let's all throw you on there. Like May as well. Right, so who's probably best to attack anything? It would get minus eight if we did that. So let's get rid of that on you. Okay, so I'm thinking. We just go for the win. Tesh. You're good at this. Thank you. Dakum. Dakum. Right, so we'll use that as a place to end this part. And the next part, we'll carry on the rounds. Tell off for now.